Welcome to another edition of Force Center, everyone. I'm Brian Zipsy, and as always, I'm joined by Matt Precon Schiffman. Matt, is it still okay to call you Precon? Is your Preek still officially on? Uh, you could call me that, or if you want, you can call me Matt Triple Crown Schiffman. Matt I'm Triple wearing Crown my Schiffman. I'm wearing my affirmed Triple Crown memorabilia. 37 years, Matt, 37 years since we saw affirmed out duel Ali Dar the entire second half of the race. He kept him at bay. Ali Dar might have got a nose in front in the stretch, but it was affirmed beating his great rival once again. 37 years, Matt. Did you ever think the Triple Crown would take so long to come back to us? No, I don't think so. And and it, it's great to be watching the affirmed Alidar uh, stretch run again. I was an affirmed guy. You were an Alidar guy, right, Brian? Loved Alidar. I loved Alidar, Matt. I, I also root for the Chicago Cubs, so that probably uh, tells you something. What are you going to do? 37 years, folks, but after what happened Saturday at Old Hilltop, Amidst the, uh, uh, the heavens opening up, it was a deluge at, at Pimlico, but it was no problem for American Pharaoh. Matt, was, was this a more impressive performance, the Preakness win by American Pharaoh, to get two-thirds of the leg, two-thirds of the way to the Triple Crown, more impressive than his Kentucky Derby win for you? I, I think that it was impressive in so many diff- other kinds of ways. Brian, you, you know I've been... Uh, an American Pharaoh guy since the Derby trail started up early in the spring and that he hasn't done anything to disappoint me. Um, it sure added some extra drama that weather, but the race started and he got out on the lead. My, my first reaction was once they got into the turn was he's going to win. It's going to be a route. He's going to, he's going to blow this field away. And then they went down the back stretch and it continued to look that way as they exited the back, back stretch into the turn. I suddenly got a little concerned because the field was catching up and I, and I had a momentary worry that something had gone wrong, but no such thing, Brian. Victor was sitting chilly, Matt. He was waiting for uh, waiting uh, the other horses to, to come a little bit. He was giving American Pharaoh that breather. Uh, he had to lead the whole way. It was a lot like the Rebel Stakes, that sloppy track. It was a, it was a fast track all day until about half an hour out. That rain, the rains came, and it turned uh, into a sea of slop. In some ways, I like the Derby better. The Derby proved to me that he could overcome a tough, competitive race and still win. That's a good thing to have in the bank. In the Preakness, it was as easy as could be. I mean, Dortmund. I can't think he ran his best race in the Preakness, and, and I obviously firing line didn't fire. So uh, it, it was left to American Pharaoh's own devices, and what we saw was a very impressive win. And and to and to American uh, American Pharaoh's credit, he's the one that didn't crumble. didn't Didn't make any difference to him whether he was running on the slop or running at Churchill Downs or running in the parking lot, for that matter. Running in the parking lot, he almost ran into the parking lot away from the horses. Seven lengths, Matt. It was easier than that. He probably could have won by more than ten if he wanted to. Long shot, tail of Verve, a non-winner of one coming out of a maiden win. at Keeneland got up for second. Are we to make much of the times? The the Derby was 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 not particularly fast. The Preakness was actually a little slow. Yeah, I, I winning these races is not about is not about the time. They're not going to compete with Secretariat's records. This is about winning the races. This is about winning the races, and American Pharaoh has done just that. And now the Triple Crown. Matt, there's been 13 horses, as you well know, since 1979, starting with Spectacular Bid. 13 horses that have won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness and have traveled to Belmont Park to try to win that elusive Triple Crown. I'll have another. Didn't get his chance. He was scratched before the race or the day before the race, 12 others took their shot in the Belmont and they're 0 for 12. 
are we seeing the horse? Are we seeing the one that's going to make it one for 14 since a friend? Is American Pharaoh a likely triple crown winner in your eyes? Well, I, I think it's worth our while, Brian, to take a look at it. Do we have some good reasons that American Pharaoh is going to be the one that uh, wins a triple crown after 37 years? I think we can come up with some good reasons, Brian. Okay, Matt, let's do that. I, I guess there's a, a few reasons out there. I mean, he, he, you, you think he's overcome adversity, don't you? I'm not, I'm not 100% sold on that. I think the adversity may still come in New York, but has he overcome adversity in your eyes? I, I, I think he has. He overcame uh, 18 post position. I know he moved over a couple slots into the 16. So he wins at Churchill from an 18 post position. Then we go to Preakness, and everybody's worried about the fact that he's breaking out of the one post. No big deal. And on top of it, as you talked about before, that crazy, insane weather that didn't phase him either. So I know he, he hasn't had a rough trip, and there's those other kind of factors. But for right now, he's handled outside post, inside post, dry track, crazy wet track. I think that's a great reason. So American Pharaoh can overcome adversity. The question is, how much more adversity can he overcome? And we'll see some in the Belmont. There are fresh horses. There are horses uh, who, of course, didn't run in the Preakness. And, and that's been a big excuse lately. What else, Matt? What else makes you think that American Pharaoh is the horse? I, I think uh, prior to the Derby, uh, there was so much talk about this being one of the best three-year-old crops in many, many, many years. And I don't think there's anybody left that uh, will argue with that, but that's not been an issue for American Pharaoh. He's won every single race he's been in against those three-year-olds this year. That's got to be a feather in his cap. Yeah, he. Uh, I think it remains to be seen how great this crop will turn out to be. I still like the crop. Uh, maybe it looked even better pre-derby than it does now, but uh, still, there's a lot of good horses as they showed with their consistency and, and nice wins leading up to the Derby. American Pharaoh was best in Kentucky. He was best in Baltimore. I, I have to agree with you, Matt. He, he's, no one would argue that he's not the best three-year-old in the, in the country right now. We'll see if that carries him over to Belmont. What else we got? Uh, American Pharaoh has the right running style to win the Belmont Stakes. If you look back historically, as we've, we've talked about running style with the Derby, and the Preakness and the, the running style for the Belmont Stakes is on the lead or very close to the lead to win the Belmont Stakes. And he's clearly demonstrated that he can do that. Yeah, Matt, I haven't seen a lot of horses wire the Belmont since uh, since the Triple Crown winners. But of course, maybe that's a good sign. Secretariat affirmed Seattle Slough. They were on the lead in the Belmont, weren't they? They took the race to their competition, and their competition could not defeat the speed horse in those races. So it'll be interesting if American Pharaoh wires the Belmont. Uh, that would keep the, uh, the wiring the Belmont of the Triple Crown winners intact of late. Um, I think it's an interesting decision. And, I, and I, I also thought it was an interesting note to hear Victor Espinosa say he changed his mind about going to the lead in the Preakness after that torrential rain came and the track turned sloppy, I, I think it was the right move, especially out of the one hall. And I tell you what, if he goes to the Belmont and Victor's planning on taking him off the lead, even if it's just second or third with this horse and maybe maybe with California Chrome last year, I don't love that move. I, I hope he's on the lead right away in the Belmont. Yeah, and, and that certainly can lead us into one of the no, another reason why uh, American Pharaoh might win the Triple Crown. And that's exactly what you're talking about, Brian. Espinoza has been in this position before, not just to ride in the Belmont Stakes, but in the position to win the Triple Crown, right? It happened with War Emblem. It happened with California Chrome. And hopefully Victor has learned a lot from those experiences. Nobody else uh, can talk about having that kind of experience. And hopefully he's learn from that. Same can also be said for uh, American Pharaoh's trainer, Bob Baffert. Yeah, Matt, uh, it, it, certainly the connections are, uh, 
I, I think a positive. I think you're right. I think they're a positive. Baffert, of course, has come so close. Silver Charm was extremely close. Real Quiet was even closer. Baffert seems to know how to train for this five-week Triple Crown. He seems to know how to get his horses ready for the Derby and then keep them in very good shape throughout the uh, throughout the five weeks into the Belmont. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I think Victor. I think Victor probably learned something. No jockeys ever went over three uh, with a horse who's won the Derby in the Preakness uh, has ever gone over three in the Belmont. So that experience, be it all, be it albeit losing experience, is is a feather in his cap. Are you at all worried? Just to get off this list for a second, are you all worried that uh, that American Pharaoh will be heading to Churchill Downs to train rather than to Big Sandy, to Belmont, to the unique configurations of Belmont Park? Well, I guess if I was the trainer, and I guess if I was the connections, I think I might prefer to have him on the Belmont surface uh, a little bit longer, but. This is what Baffert has done in in all of his previous uh, attempts. He's sticking with that. So hey, I got to assume Bob Baffert knows a little bit a uh, little bit more about training than I do. But you know, we can we can go back to a couple more intangibles with um, with American Pharaoh. He's the kind of horse that he's not going to get in his way in this quest for the triple crown so much talk about his personality that he's so cool calm collected we saw that before the derby on the walkover in the paddock the 140,000 people we saw it at the preakness again when the skies opened up thunder lightning he doesn't turn a hair i i think that personality and that demeanor is going to allow baffert to get him revitalized, put his, put his weight back on and, and have him ready. Yeah. Good point, Matt. The, the, the Belmont won't be quite uh, the madness. That is everything that goes into the Kentucky Derby and American Pharaoh didn't really show a lot of, uh, a lot of anguish with uh, those 170,000 people there. And, and I think a lot can be said for, for American Pharaoh being just a, a kind, smart horse. I, I, I think the greatest horses we've seen in history are, are also smart horses comparatively to other thoroughbreds they're running against. And, and you're right, that, that, that makes life easier for the human connections when American Pharaoh is kind of easygoing and knows what to do out there. So yeah, the, a mile and a half, that's a good thing, a good, uh, good uh, uh, feather in his cap. American Pharaoh will uh, probably uh, come in healthy and he'll probably uh, not expend too much energy during the race just because that's the kind of horse he is. Yeah, and it's that that smartness uh, that you were talking about, and, and I'm going to couple that when you talked about him not facing adversity. Maybe, maybe it's that smartness that he has. Maybe he's the kind of horse that makes his good trip, that just knows how to do things and not get into those adverse situations. We'll see in... Uh, We'll see in a couple more weeks. And, and then the last thing I want to throw in about American Pharaoh is everything I've heard is that he is such a smooth running horse. He's so light on his feet on the track that he's the kind of horse that's very unlikely to end up with a sore ankle or sore muscles from his training because he's just so kind in the morning. Yeah, another good point, Matt. And that kind of goes along with the last thing we're saying. Uh, he, he's just a friendly horse and a horse that uh, knows how to take care of himself to some extent. Of course, he had the uh, uh, frog bruise as a two-year-old where he's had the little patch uh, on ever since, never taken off. Doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Um, I wondered at one point along the way if Bob Baffert was was babying him a little bit over the winter. But um, hey, as you said, we're not, uh, we don't, we don't know how to train, nor do we know this horse nearly as well as Bob Baffert. Everything they've done has been great. Having said that, Matt, there's a reason that, that 12 horses have lost the Belmont, why, why it's 0-13 since affirmed. I think we need to take a look at the field a little bit. Let's take an early look. We're going to jump into it more in coming weeks on Horse Center. But uh, who are the horses you feel are the uh, main obstacles, the main stumbling blocks? Uh, Smarty Jones had his birdstone. Real Quiet had his victory gallop. Who is the biggest danger for American Pharaoh this year? 
Well, I think uh, a couple of the horses that are coming back from the Derby that skipped the Preakness in particular catch my fancy. Uh, certainly, where he we're going to have to be concerned about materiality. He, in a lot of people's opinions, ran one of the best races uh, in the Kentucky Derby after getting off to such a bad start. Um, he's continued to train and mature, and I'm also excited to see Mutahij. Uh, run again. They took him right to Belmont. He's learning there, as you mentioned earlier, about getting there. Uh, had a spectacular workout this morning, from what I heard. Fast. He seems to like the track. Those are my two, those two M's, materiality and Mutahij uh, in particular. How about you, Bri? Well, we're just agreeing way too much, Matt. It's starting <laughs> to scare me. Uh, we put our minds together and we agree a lot. Usually that uh, could spell doom. For us, but yeah, th those two, and I would add Frosted, of course. Frosted was oh, yeah. kind of the horse I really, uh, I really was uh, gearing towards in the Kentucky Derby, along with Dortmund. I thought Frosted ran a very good, uh, a very good Derby, uh, where he was the one that of all the horses that were in the back half, and he was really in the back quarter early of the Derby. He made up a lot of ground. Uh, he's not a horse with a real explosive kick but he's a horse uh, that grinds it out and just keeps coming. And every single good race that Frosted's run, he's running hard at the finish. I think that's a good thing for the Belmont. Uh, you don't usually see it last to first with an explosive move. You see the horses that just are saying, I can run a mile and a half. I'm going to run well all day long. And then they keep doing it down the stretch and eventually they get by uh, maybe, maybe a triple crown hopeful. So I think Frosted is a big danger. I like materiality as well. I think uh, I think the Derby was not his race. He's he's got a lot more speed than he was able to show in the Derby. He seems like a horse that would run all day, and obviously he's a big talent who should only get better from the experience of the Kentucky Derby. And move to Hughes, yeah, I guess both of we agree on our long shot. He's going to be twenty or thirty to one, I think. And uh, yeah, he's trained. He's trained to run long. It's a different kind of training over there. I think the Derby wasn't, it wasn't a terrible race for him, but I don't think it was his best. I think the, uh, the longer training in America, specifically at Belmont, that kind of track, I think might be right up his alley. So those are my three, Muktahij, Materiality, and Frosted as look out, Mr. American Pharaoh. By the way, Matt, do you want American Pharaoh to win? The, just, just your choice, if you could see him win? I, he I, he will continue to be my choice in the in the Belmont Stakes. That, but that's not what I'm asking. Do you want him to win? Do you want him to win the Triple Crown? Two and a I half. I think it's time for us to to have a Triple Crown winner. There's an awful lot of racing fans out there that haven't had the the fortune that you and I have had to have witnessed three Triple Crown winners in our lifetimes. It's time for a lot of those. Uh, a lot of those fans. It's another question, Brian. Do I think that American Pharaoh is going to be the next Triple Crown winner? I think that's probably something we'll get into in the next couple shows before the Belmont Stakes. We'll talk about that more later. Matt, I'm going to go on record right now and say I want to see him win the Triple Crown. I'm ready for a Triple Crown winner. I don't know what it'll be like next year if we get a Triple Crown winner this year, if it'll be the same uh, excitement uh, now that the drought would be over. But I want to see a Triple Crown. However, I'm going to give you this coming attraction. My betting and my rooting interests are going to be pretty far different in the Belmont. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If I, if I don't get my wish and American Pharaoh doesn't win the Belmont, Maybe my wallet will will appreciate it. All right, guys, that's another edition of Horse Center. As always, uh, we're brought to you by Horse Racing Nation and Derby Wars. Uh, we have a, a great uh, webcast tonight coming from the headquarters of HRN, where Dallas Stewart is going to join the gang at Horse Center. So I hope you can watch that. Talking Tale of Verve, who we haven't even mentioned yet, Matt, but we're going to talk about Tale of Verve soon. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure as always, and thank you, Amber. Yes, thanks to our producer, Amber Marr, and thank you to all watching today. We'll see you next week on another edition of Horse Center. <laughs>